been discussing the different risks uh, in the world, exogenous political risks. Um, Chris, I'd like to start with you. How are these risk factors um, challenging or influencing your investment thesis in U.S. fixed income? Those are always the types of risks that are most difficult to price in and then also react to. Frankly, I think the market's done a reasonably good job looking through some of these non-fundamental bouts of volatility, um, political, geopolitical, and otherwise, and have held up reasonably well, even though we've seen some, some volatility in the markets. If you can stick to your fundamentals, a longer-term horizon, you can, you can use these as, as opportunities. But you really have to try to differentiate, are any of these risks you know, going to become longer-term fundamental situations? And that's really what we try to spend time doing. Michael, how are you thinking about the big geopolitical risks um, in your investing? And specifically, how do you think the global risk events impact U.S. Treasuries? One of the areas that we've actually found an opportunity is this shift in many emerging markets to more orthodox policy. Um, well, in the U.S. and in Europe, I think you have a much more charged political environment and uh, in some cases, the abandonment of, of orthodox policy. But in places, you know, like Mexico, despite all of the speculative attacks of, of sticking to their guns and, and, you know, hiking interest rates to protect their currency, of following through with fiscal reform and liberalizing the energy sector. In the short term, you know, that was not enough to counteract the speculation, but eventually it was, and we've seen a very sharp snapback when the peso, Brazil, is going after corruption in a more forceful manner than has pretty much ever happened there, and that is going to lead to some political, positive political changes. Argentina has done a 180-degree about-face under Macri to basically um, re-embrace market principles and, and get the economy started again. Modi in India uh, has embarked upon a very rigorous reform of the tax system. Uh, has you know set in place inflation targeting with their central bank, so a lot of you know really positive fundamental changes that I think will pay dividends for for years to come. Uh, then there's the flip side. There are places like Venezuela that is in a beyond a financial crisis, but a humanitarian crisis led by bad policies. Um, there's challenges going on in Turkey. Um, so you're seeing the bifurcation. A lot of that bifurcation is due to whether the political environment is improving or, or deteriorating. Europe has changed more in the last couple of years than it has really since 1945. You know, you had kind of one model moving towards integration for, you know, 60 years. And this is the first point I think we're turning in a different direction. So not an immediate flashpoint, but longer term. We heard uh, about the importance of idiosyncratic opportunities and risks. <laughs> uh, are you also finding um, such opportunities in the equity space? Yeah, I think so. I. I think that sometimes, at least in the equity space, there's so much talk about politics and so much of this sort of macro level. And, and ultimately, companies are valuable based on their discounted earnings stream. And so that's why we're fundamental, and that's why we really focus on, on the earnings. And a lot of what goes on in politics doesn't necessarily, certainly in the short term, affect earnings that much. There are things that do. It's like why, that, why the tax plan in the United States is is pretty important um, and there's still a focus on that and whether that's uh, that's going to happen or not at this point we just don't know but if it's it's not likely to happen until next year but the overall political environment i think has been not so impactful in the market because it hasn't actually affected that that earnings stream